FromSoft games have a way of telegraphing the pure strength of the enemies you encounter on your journey by their size. Large stature like that of Margit, Radon, Horlu, or Radagon tends to imply strength. We lowly tarnished are the height of an average person, while the knights we face tower over us, and the dragons that rain fire from the sky make us feel utterly insignificant. That is, until we gain the strength and prowess necessary to defeat these enemies, regardless of their intimidating size. Much like other Souls games, in Elden Ring, it seems as though stature is much more than a way for the game to imply enemy difficulty or grandeur. Within the lands between themselves, those that harbor great strength tower over those that do not, and societally, they tend to rank above those that are physically smaller than themselves. So what happens to those who are born in this society that happen to be short in stature? They're doomed to a life of ridicule for their size. So what do they do? Well, what else can they do, besides band together, forming a military force of their own that bends to no lord and focuses on themselves? If the land will not offer them dignity and a space free from ridicule, well then they'll have to create their own. They will form a militia. Thank you for joining us for today's Elden Lore. We wanted to take a second to ask you to please hit that subscribe button. One click, well, two if you're willing to hit the bell, goes a long way in helping our channel stay on top of YouTube's algorithm. The harder the channel's pushed, the more likely we are to continue growing this community of Elden Ring enthusiasts, and continue the lore analysis going on in the comments of each of our videos. Whether you're new to the channel or you've been with us from the beginning, thank you for watching. You're the reason we're able to keep digging through Elden Ring and we appreciate you. With that said, let's continue this exploration of the most vulgar fighting force in the lands between. The vulgar militia is made up of those in the lands between born with the unforgivable malady of being short. Their ashes give us our best look at the origins of the vulgar militia. Used to summon the spirits of three vulgar militiamen, Spirits of the vulgar militia who wield long-hafted, serrated hatchets. These brutal weapons are particularly effective at causing blood loss to opponents. In the lands between, the small were scorned, and so they formed their vulgar militia as a means to make a living, albeit an ignominy. For whatever reason, the people of the lands between scorned those who are short, which is confusing to say the least. As far as we can tell, the vulgar militia are not misbegotten. They're not omen, as omen are not only born with horns, but typically grow to be towering heaps of muscle. And they're not living in any way that is antithetical to the Golden Order. They're simply small people, perhaps unfit to act as knights or armed forces. Essentially, lords had no use for them, so they were simply cast out. While they've created their own community by banding together as a militia, their small stature seems to still be an area of self-confidence among their ranks. The vulgar militia helm is described as a helm worn by lean, mean, and filthy militiamen. The upwards extension serves to create an appearance of larger size, however slightly. The vulgar militia is aware of their limitations. They are not particularly intimidating, and these helms were likely constructed as a way to add some gravitas to their appearance. Their limbs are long and not particularly muscular, a stark contrast to the taller enemies we face. It seems likely that this is why they tend to rely on bleed damage to defeat their foes. The vulgar militia saw is a weapon comprised of a saw blade attached to a long grip. Brandished by the vulgar militia, its serrated edge is very effective at inflicting blood loss. The saw is said to also be used to cut up bodies to feed the militia, but there are no first-hand witnesses to confirm the dire rumor. We believe that the stories of the militia feeding on their victims may be another tactic they employ to instill fear, regardless of their diminutive size. Their use of long sweeping attacks with pulled and chained weapons is one way they make up for their size, but another is their use of stealth and clever ambush tactics. 
In certain areas where you find the militia, it's much more likely that they will find you. Smoke appears, obscuring your view, and you're forced to take them on with little visibility. They use this to their advantage, attacking from all sides in an attempt to bring down their prey before it has a chance to fight back. This is an effective tactic for those who are frail of body but wield long arms to fell their foes. Another key concept to understanding the vulgar militia is their locations throughout the lands between. You don't tend to find them randomly roaming open landscapes, and their weapons and armor offer an explanation as to why. The vulgar militia Shodel tells us, the vulgar militia are the undecorated stewards of rancor, scorched battlefields that none dare approach, and forbidden domains better forgotten by the rest of their world. And their armor says, freshly singed battlegrounds effusing with the stench of death, forbidden lands that will be excised from memory of history. This is where the vulgar militia serve as untiring, unsung watchkeepers. So the militia tends to stick to areas others would not. They likely pillage what they can from the dead and make their camps where typical residents of the lands between fear to tread. They can be found in dangerous mining caves, the jail caves, where rot has made its home, and the forbidden lands on the way to the Grand Lift of Rold. All places many would consider inhospitable. However, possibly the most famous location that can be found is what we believe may be their base of operations, outside of the bestial sanctum in Kaled. Many know this area as one of the earliest rune farms discovered in Elden Ring. It could reliably farm thousands of runes by riding torrent and defeating vulgar militiamen before they had a chance to fight back, but we believe there's much more to this area. Outside of the bestial sanctum stands a black blade kindred, and should we catch its attention, it will attack our tarnished. However, it seems to take no issue with the vulgar militiamen within its eyeline. This to us suggests that the militia is meant to be here. They're not seen as a threat or intrusion to this place and there's a skill the militia uses that backs up this theory. When battling the vulgar militiamen, they can use the Beast Claw incantation against us, which is described as an incantation taught by Garonk, the Beast Clergyman. Creates Beast Claws that rend the land with shockwaves. This incantation represents the fury of Garonk, his bestial nature returned, as much as it does his restless agitation. This incantation can only be learned from Garonk in exchange for Deathroot, so at some point, the militia must have weeded Deathroot for the beast clergyman, just as D, Hunter of the Dead, and our Tarnished have. Finally, there's one last tie between the militia and Garonk. The vulgar militia seems to wield some fledgling form of destined death. When fighting the militia, they will sometimes attack with the same red and black flame we face when fighting Malaketh, the Black Blade. This power is tied directly to Malaketh himself, and is not the black flame that we see wielded by the Godskin Apostles. The red tint of these attacks solidifies not only the tie between the vulgar militia and Garonk, but Garonk and Malaketh, for those who still believe they are two separate entities. This revelation leads to another possible goal of the vulgar militia that's never addressed in game, but we believe makes sense given the context. As we know, the militia is found in scorched battlefields and acts as watchkeepers to freshly singed battlegrounds, effusing with the stench of death. If we consider that the militia must have a personal relationship with Garonk, given the sheer number of them surrounding and protecting the bestial sanctum, as well as their use of the Beast Claw incantation and red-black flame of destined death. Perhaps, the vulgar militia found their purpose in weeding Deathroot for Garonk, in order to continue wielding his power. They make their bases in these fresh battlegrounds, putting themselves in areas most likely to produce fresh crops of those who live in death. By keeping themselves in proximity to creatures with the likelihood of producing death root, they can gather more for Garonk, return to their base, and be rewarded with additional power. 
In this way, the vulgar militia, the diminutive castaways of the lands between, can grow in strength despite their small stature, and continue to strike fear into the hearts of those who would look down upon them. The vulgar militia is another example of a marginalized group in the lands between, but what's interesting about this one is that it would not exist at all without the inherent prejudices of the Golden Order. Unlike the Omen and the Misbegotten, hated for their ties to the Crucible, and the Albanarchs, hated for being an artificial form of life with no tie to grace, the members of the vulgar militia were shunned for nothing more than being too short. They're a band of highwaymen that only exists due to an unfound prejudice, an example of the people of the lands between being responsible for the birth of their own boogeymen. Thanks to this short-sighted prejudice, travelers must always watch their backs, as you never know when the vulgar militia may be lying in wait, ready to ambush those full enough to make their way through their territory. Thank you for joining us for this exploration of the vulgar militia. What do you think of these fearsome, dangerous, deadly, tiny little guys? Do you have any theories as to why height is seen as a symbol of status in the lands between? Where did you first encounter the militia? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss out on the next episode in our series of enemy deep dives. We look forward to seeing you again for more. Elden Lore.